All right. Hi there, Hi, everybody. Everyone. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here. We are Sean and Allison McManus of Spoken Garden, and we're here on behalf of the National Garden Bureau and Garden Communicators International to help promote a really fun big event coming up on November 9th. That's called the Authors Talk Gardening Book Party. If you want to go check out the event real quick or get signed up and reserve your spot, uh, click the link down either in the description or the pinned comment. Now, one of the authors that's going to be at the November 9th event is Shelly Cramp. She's with us here. She is an an author, a speaker, a blogger, and a gardener, of course. And <laughs> so she writes regularly on her own blog site. She also loves to write and talk about biblical plants and gardening passages that can help others grow their own faith through gardening. She is the author of the new book, My Father is the Gardener, and she's with us here today. Hi, Shelly. Hi, it's great to see you guys. So Good great to see to you, see you Shelly. How are you? Good. It's finally cool enough to sit outside here in Texas. So, mm -hmm. so Shelly, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and why you're passionate about gardening? I would love to. I'll try to be short. But we could go on forever, right? Because gardening is just such a passionate uh, endeavor, hobby, whatever you want to call it, way of life, I like to say. But I, my husband and I moved here as soon as we got married 32 years ago. So I've always been a Texas gardener, but I did grow up in California. So I am familiar with the Mediterranean type climate that the West Coast has. And so, uh, but and there growing up, we always visited my grandmother's garden, my great grandmother's garden, actually in Fresno, California, whenever we went went to visit her every visit started with a tour around her garden and she would show us what's blooming and what she's working on and what she's so excited about and what she had to rip out and all all that and she just she just infused me with this crazy passion it just seemed fun she was so engaged and lively I mean she entered you know plant shows at the state fair up until her you know 90 years old and so uh, she just passed on that vitality and that interest for me I knew as soon as we had our own home which I just started with a little balcony our first apartment a bunch of pots out there I just knew it was something I would want to do too so it's been wonderful and of course uh, we my husband and I have raised five children I'm glad to say and so if, you're always looking for ways to get them outside right so it's wonderful <laughs> to just uh, play outside play in the back and dig here and there as they're playing so it's been a wonderful life <laughs> Nice. Oh, I love definitely. that story. Yeah. And so uh, also, Shelly, anybody not familiar with your book, My Father is the Gardener, can you tell us more about the book and what it's about? Yes, I happen to have one right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my father's a gardener. He uh, takes his title from John 15, 1, where Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. I love that because, you know, God planted a garden in Eden way in the beginning in Genesis. So to hear Jesus say, my father is a gardener, all these chapters later, like, wow, he's still at it. You know, this is great. Mm -hmm. So there really is this <laughs> logic, really, and if you ask me, it's the only way to read the Bible is to look at all the gardening references to see how continuous that is throughout the whole story. And then it really is a great way to, way to relate. So anyway, uh, the book takes us all through gardening work, cultivating, planting, preparing the soil, even a chapter on composting, and just connecting all those verses and passages and scriptures that refer to these common practices. It's really fun. And then we got to, as you can see by the beautiful cover, we got to work with a wonderful local artist here in Fort Worth to do illustrate the book. That's my favorite part is that it's illustrated. And she crafted all of her drawings just precisely for the different passages that we were featuring. So it's a really visual pleasure to look at the book, even if you don't have time to read, just look at the book, you know, growing up, uh, our children and reading all those picture books, I, I never really wanted to get away from that. So it's fun to peruse and, and that way as well. But we included some photography from the uh, botanical holdings, the specimens uh, at, at the publishers at Brit Press. So there's just a lot of layers here for you to dig in and enjoy. I, I love hearing just about the book and how inspirational it'll, it'll be for everybody to read it. I can't wait to actually I read know. it. I know. So based on your book, what are maybe like three recommendations or ways that you think others can become more spiritual in their own garden? Yes. Now, I, I love this question, Allison. Thank you. Yeah, there really are three basic ways I would say. Well, the first is I love, you know, God, you think of God, he is big, he's powerful, he's almighty. Oh my goodness. But his presence is very quiet. And, and I think we all go to our gardens to find a quiet 
you know, a, a refuge, get out of the world. It's so noisy out there and these phones are buzzing us all the time. So really we have this natural inclination to get out to the garden, to just get into the peace and the rhythm of the land and to find that quiet presence. So that's really the first, I think God geniusly designed it that way. Come out here and be in my quiet presence is the first thing. And he gives us a still small voice in our soul. And it's when you get out in the garden, you can start to hear that quiet voice, the loudness of the of the world kind of fight, fades away. That's why we go there. So that's the first way. The second way is there are so many references to the landscape throughout scripture. And so it's fun to just either notice those in your own garden, in your own land, or, or um, even plant them. Like my favorite in Psalm 1 is a tree planted by a stream of water. A person, you know, who's refreshed in the Lord's words are going to be like a tree planted by a stream of water. And so uh, do you have a tree planted by a little brook? You know, is there a pond in your backyard? Can you put it in a fountain? Can you start to create this little vignette just to remind you of that word and to enter into that kind of refreshment? I just planted a crab apple tree. I'm so excited you can read about it. Uh, this week I posted about it, but uh, there's a wonderful verse in song songs 2-3 uh, that says, my lover is like an apple tree in the forest. You know, so that apple tree is blooming and fresh and fragrant and so pretty in spring, but those compared to the forest trees that are, you know, they're steadfast, they're evergreen, but here's this spectacular apple tree in the blooming in the spring. And so it was so fun. I had, a, we had a couple of junipers and a pine tree out front. We don't really have a forest um, per se, you know, we're here in the prairie land of Texas, but we did have a few pine trees in front. And so uh, to put that little crab apple out there and just be, you know, remember that, that little part of scripture and, and be refreshed by that was really fun. And then the last way, of course, is to actually plant plants from the Bible. I'm sitting, this is my fig tree in the back. The fig tree can teach you a lot about the Word of God. So to have one in my yard has just really drawn me into studying those different passages. And I mean, even Jesus said, learn this lesson from the fig tree. I'm like, okay, let's do it. You know, what can we learn from this fig tree? So those are th those are the three main ways. And it, and it, it will uh, occupy your heart for, you know, and give you a lot of energy and, and fun new twists and things things to plant in your yard. Love that. Yeah, it's really that. inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. And, and Shelly, so our last question for you, uh, why do you think anybody should attend the November 9th Authors Talk Gardening event? I think Everybody needs to attend this event. This is designed for fun. It's designed a perfectly positioned in the fall, just as your garden work is drifting off and your holiday planning is starting. We bring together four authors. I'm one to join a great company, a variety of topics. And I just think it's fun to get to know the person behind the book. You know, it's kind of behind the scenes, or I'd say behind the scenery, uh, the inside story, what inspired each author. And you just learn so much more so it'll give you a lot of ideas you know we say it's fall but really i know your spring garden is ruminating in the back of your head yeah. what are you going to play and what are you going to do next so it'll give you some fun creative ideas to think of for next spring and also for your holiday list and also just a great way to spend the evening come join us online it'll be fun it's going to be a good yeah, time you're so right too it's so it's it's great it's a great place to get inspo from other gardeners and just to connect and talk about our gardens right oh yeah when things are yes. really starting to slow down yeah and aren't there going to be giveaways as well? Oh, yes. So the books are, get, you know, prize books are given away. Oh, I maybe I, I won't tell you some of the other surprises available. And then also we do break out personally into breakout rooms at the end. So we can talk personally. I'd love to meet you, talk to you in, in person. And each of the authors will have their own breakout room too. So it's there's a lot here. Oh, and plus, you know, if you don't know the Garden Com International or the National Gardening Bureau, who are both co-sponsoring this event, you need to get to know these organizations too. They, I mean, the National Garden Bureau has been around for a hundred years, and Garden Com has been around for seventy-five. We're still young pups, right? But, but <laughs> it, these are great, uh, great organizations that have been here all along to help gardeners um, just you know, learn more about gardening and connect to resources, connect to growers and different kinds of plants and, and just get to know the industry a little bit better. So you'll get to know them too. So it's really worth, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Come along. That's true. I love that you brought that up. It's going to be jam packed. Yep. Yes. Jam packed. <laughs> well, Shelly, for those that are watching that maybe they want to, they can't wait till November 9th. They want to <laughs> connect with you sooner. Where can they find you online and on social to kind of, you know, 
follow along. Well, thank you. I can't wait till November 9th either, by the way. My <laughs> website is Garden and Delight. And actually, delight Eden means delight. So the website is Garden in Eden or Garden in Delight.com. I write a blog there regularly. I'd love to have you meet me there. And then uh, I'm also my favorite um, social media channel is Instagram because that's the funnest pictures, but also <laughs> Facebook. I have an author page on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn too. So meet me in any of those places. I'd love to get to know you. Great. And where can people find your book and, and your other books, right? You have other books. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, my book is on Amazon. It's on Powell's, which is a great book seller out of the West Coast. And it's also at the publisher's uh, website, which is Brit Press. But all of those links are on my website. I have a page for my book. And, and so come to my page and then click from there to where, where your favorite vendor is. Great. Okay. Yeah, this has been so great to talk with you, Shelly, and thank you everyone else for being here. If you want to know more about Shelly, get to know her more and the three other book authors, make sure to click the link in the description or the pinned comment and get your spot reserved right now for the November 9th Authors Talk Gardening event. So thank you, Shelly. Great to see Bye. you guys. Take good care. You. We hope to see you all yep. there. Yep, we'll see you there. Yes.